Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Harrogate series. Harrogate is a large borough, one of the 11 districts of North Yorkshire. It's got 139 civil parishes. Which one are we in in this episode? Welcome back to Harrogate, everybody. The weather is still drab and miserable. The fog and mist is still here, but I'm still in good spirits. Now, I've just driven from Coneythorpe and Clareton, which you saw last week, over some wicked bumps in the road. Seriously, they were like humpback bridges. They weren't actually bridges, they were just bumps. <laughs> and that road, Moor Lane, brings you into this place. Welcome to the lovely little parish of Arkendale. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Arkendale, Earcons Valley. Welcome back to Harrogate again everyone, and just like last week, we're on the outskirts of Knaresborough. This is Arkendale, which lies six miles away from Harrogate close to the A1M. Centuries ago, Arkendale was known as Erkendine, a name thought to be Old English in origin, meaning Eirkens Valley. It's sited on a hill, but there is a low-lying valley close by. There's also a theory that says Arkendale could be connected to the name Archibald, and could mean precious or true. In all probability, Arkendale was originally an English or Anglican settlement taken over later by Scandinavian settlers. In the Doomsday Book, it was recorded as both Argandine and Archerden, and records dated 1166 show it as Herchenden. Once upon a few years ago, this village was part of the Old West Riding, but since the 1974 boundary changes, it's been in North Yorkshire. Predominantly a farming community for several centuries well into the 20th, it was owned by an estate controlled by the Nussie family, who built Arkendale Hall in 1909. It has several key features like a church, a pub and a village hall, the latter of which is the most interesting. There are also some other cracking buildings too. It's not a big place, so come with me again for a walk around another lovely little North Yorkshire village. We start in the southeastern corner of Arkendale on the road to Coneythorpe. Although Arkendale is on a hill, the valley to which its name refers is believed to be the low-lying, sloping part of the village behind the houses along this road, Moor Lane, all the way to Dale House Farm. Farming is a way of life here. This bench celebrates a hundred years of farming in Arkendale by the Houseman family. It's quite common to see farm vehicles on these roads, but buses use them too. Arkendale is served by the number 21 between Knaresborough and Borough Bridge. That bus stop is known as the Old Barn, and this building is the barn in question. Several former farm buildings around Arkendale have been converted into homes. So too have both of its former chapels. Seen here is the Primitive Chapel, which was erected in the 1860s and ceased to be used in the 1930s. The Wesleyan Chapel had a slightly different timeline. We'll see that later as we continue walking through the village. Opposite the chapel is an attractive old terraced row. Arkendale is full of buildings that date back centuries. 
Perhaps one of the most striking would be this one. Although it's not a listed building, it's certainly unusual. It appears to be a normal house with some kind of battlemented tower at the back of it. What this is or was, I don't know, as there appears to be little information out there about it. It's right next door to this house which bears a date stone of 1867. You won't find a lot of houses here that predate the 1700s. A lot were rebuilt in the 18th century by the then Lord of the Manor, Robert Byerley, who lived at Goldsborough. Arkendale has no shop or post office. That said, we will see the old post office shortly. It still retains a post box, sited near the empty old red phone box. Those can be found opposite the old pinfold, which has been turned into a little garden. It features a water pump, which provided Arkendale with clean, fresh drinking water. Spring-fed, it was built in 1901 by the Nussie family and was last used in the 1960s. It was renovated in 2002. Next to the pinfold is the old reading room, a modest property, last valued at around £200,000. As promised, next we have the old post office. That's this building in front of us now. In the 1970s, it had relocated to a private bungalow and finally closed in 1989. Records show that in the 1850s, a man named Peter Wincup was the village postmaster and it doubled as a shop. Close by is Manor Park, a cul-de-sac that stands on the site of Manor Farm, whose buildings were demolished in 1983 to make way for this new housing. We're now approaching the centre of the village, and with it, the gorgeous church of St Bartholomew. This stands on an important site. You don't notice it on the approach to it, but we've actually been climbing a shallow hill. The church sits on the summit, the highest point of the village. A religious building has stood here since the 14th century, although the present building only dates from 1836. Interestingly, it was the first church to be consecrated in the new Diocese of Ripon in January 1837. It's open daily from 10am until 5pm and everyone is welcome to visit. Recently, it was given a revamp thanks to the Platinum Jubilee Clock Restoration Project. Proudly overlooking the junction is the War Memorial. It's for World War I only and bears nine names, including two members of the Houseman family. We're now on Rains, Arkendale's second main street. This runs west towards Ferensby, and it's where the remaining amenities are. As well as not having a shop, something else the village lacks is a school. That said, there was one once. It opened in 1867 and closed in 1947, when the children were transferred to Staveley Community Primary School. A school bus still takes children there to this day. There's not a lot of side streets off Rains, it's mainly all centred on this one road. In front of one of the cul-de-sacs, we find a parish notice board. Tick off Arkendale, folks. That's another Harrogate parish in the books. Next, we come to the Blue Bell, the local pub. Now, local legend says Oliver Cromwell visited this pub during the Civil War, but there's no definite evidence for that claim. However, it is likely men from Arkendale were called upon to fight at the Battle of Marston Moor in 1644. Social events do take place in the Blue Bell, but mainly they're held in the Village Hall, better known as the Arkendale Community Centre. This is probably the most interesting building in the village, and the car park for it is over the road. The Community Centre is a converted World War I army hut, which originated in Ripon. It was moved here sometime after 2008. Beforehand, this area was just a disused piece of grass. Flanking its car park is the local cemetery, which is actually better defined as an extension to the churchyard of St Bartholomew's. As civilization starts to become a little thinner, we come to an area known as Lower Arkendale, which used to be called Arkendale Loftus many years ago. This area once had a second shop, run by Emma Marshall in the 1910s and 1920s. Lower Arkendale is where you'll find Marhead Bulk, a dead end which has the former Wesleyan Chapel, a small white building which was converted into a private home after it closed in 1954. Marhead Bulk takes its name from a water feature known to the locals as the Mar. The Mar is a large pond with an abundance of wildlife in and around it. It's recently been acquired on behalf of the community by the parish council. 
In 2018, a major grant enabled some significant clearance and replanting work to be undertaken here. As you can probably tell, it's not alien to a bit of flooding, but thankfully, it's never a problem for the locals because it's managed by the Friends of the Mar group. We've now reached a farm on the confusingly named Moor Lane. Arkendale has two Moor Lanes, but this one is technically Ferensby, as it begins there and runs into the village. Our last task is to make our way back to the start via a public footpath that crosses the countryside between the two Moor Lanes. It passes over a stream which feeds the Mar, before running through firstly a crop field and then a patch of waste ground. The path isn't the most well-defined in the world, but there are occasional way markers. It was a bit boggy in places too, owing to the rain and mist and the generally dreary weather in these parts of late, but with the boots on and a steely determination, I made it back to the start. Okay, not the uh, easiest footpath in the world to follow, a little bit muddy, but we are back to the beginning where we started about 45 minutes ago. It's been a nice walk around this place, Arkendale, and I do hope you've enjoyed it as much enjoyed it as much as I have. And that's going to do us for Arkendale, perhaps one of the hidden gems of Harrogate, and now it's on the map. Next week, we'll be covering another small one, which is around a mile to the west and stands on a crossroads. Join me there next week where we'll learn about a general who lends his name to the local pub. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.